Good afternoon, Judge Valley. Good afternoon, Chief Justice and fellow and commissioners. You, you've been a judge for about four or five years now. Coming to finishing off, yeah, it'll be five years in in a few months. Yes. Mm. In your own words, can you tell us why you have applied for this uh, position? In my own words, CJ, I would say. Given my, my background and given my experience, I think I would be able to perform. Thank you. I think I would be able, to, I would enjoy the work and I think I would be able to serve in my capacity as a judge of the appeal of, this, of the competition, competition appeal court. Let me say this, Chief Justice. I have a commerce degree and have studied economics and business economics, which is where I originally started and thought where I'd end up in that area. I eventually moved out to So, it's I, authorities, yes. Yes. so what I wanted to ask you firstly was, could you ask what, you know, over the years, whether you would have dealt with competition questions and competition matters and, the, you know, not, competition jurisprudence or competition economics? Not directly, not competition economics directly, not economics, not the kind of issues other than the one case is set in. Yeah. However, um, as far as the, the, the kinds of issues that arise in competition matters are concerned, those I've dealt with for a large part of my, uh, uh, of my adult career, of my adult life. It started when I became an organizer in the unions and when I started having, when I've been thrown in, uh, into having to negotiate wage agreements and retrenchment agreements. Uh, it was at that time that I came into contact with it. Before that, obviously, I've had the theoretical background to, to deal with those issues. Uh, as you will see from my CV, I've got accounts economics and business economics as my subjects that I did at university, though I was never really a keen follower of those subjects. So my interest always moved in the sociological directions. Uh, I must say, though, that from that period, I also did an, my honours thesis was on capitalism, apartheid, and inflation. My master's thesis was on Marxist theories of crisis, which are all about political economy and about economic theories. So, yes, I have not dealt with them in the sense that I've not got specific cases. But as far as the issues are concerned, I find myself on familiar ground when I have to deal with them. I'm well aware of uh, the fact of your Marxist stuff because you and I have had dialectics in the past. But, yes, but I'm, I suppose what I'm, I'm trying to probe just finally to ask you, um, if, if you didn't get the job now, I assume you'd still be prepared to stay on as an acting judge of the court, so get more experience. Let me say this about that. I, I've only been made an acting judge recently. Yes. That's not that's no fault of mine. No, I agree with that. Uh, I've been available for a long time 
in fact, uh, my judge president asked me to tell this tell this body if it came up, and I hope it didn't, that he had been pushing for a long time for me to be brought onto that court. For some reason, it didn't happen. He doesn't know. I don't know. And yes, I have now been appointed as an acting judge, and of course I will serve my term. I've been called, and I intend to carry out that calling. I've accepted the calling, and I will uh, be loyal to what I've asked, uh, what, I've, what, what I've set myself out to do. Thank you. So very yes, much. I will. I will certainly make myself available. Thank you. To, very the, much. to the extent that I may not get it, yes, I will leave that in the hands of this body, and I mean, I believe that they will make the best decision. And if I don't, and if I have to cover, come back again, there will be something for the future to be considered in the future. Commissioner, say any other question? Yes, uh, Acting President Maya. Um, good afternoon, uh, Judge. Good Shelley. afternoon, uh, Acting President Maya. How long have you acted at the CAC? I've acted only for in one matter, and I've only acted since, uh, what was it, three months ago? Six, April. Since April. I was appointed in April. Uh, I only sat in one matter. I wrote a judgment in that matter. It did get reported. Um, it wasn't, it, I, I concurred with the findings of the majority, but I, I wrote a separate judgment in that matter. My logic was slightly different from this. Um, but Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Ngozi Thomas. Oh, thank you, Chief Justice. Good afternoon, Judge. Good afternoon. You, you responded to a question directed your way about your having acted at the court to which you're applying, and you said that it was due to no fault on your part. Are we to hear that as a concern about uh, how acting appointments are uh, 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 come about in that uh, division, in that court? I, I, Commissioner well, Nkosi Thomas. Well, well, I just want context. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, Nkosi Thomas, I don't know much about how acting appointments are chosen. I cannot therefore make a comment on whether there is any, whether, whether, whether there is anything correct or incorrect. All I can say is that I was available, and I don't know why I was not chosen. Um, to the extent that it has disadvantaged me, I accept it has disadvantaged me, but I ask this body do not take that into account because it's a disadvantage that was not that I had no uh, control over. Um, I all ask that I be judged purely on the basis of the jurisprudence that I have produced over the five years I have given the committee. The, the work I've produced. I've given you a list of all the judgments I've written. I've, judgments, I've produced judgments I thought that were quite good that you should look at, and a list of reported judgments. I am, but coming back, and I don't want to evade your question, Commissioner uh, Nkosi Thomas, I wish I, had been, I wish I had been given a better opportunity to act and to expose my skills and to develop my skills. Because the one thing I don't want to create impression is that I know it all, that I know everything about competence. I'm going to walk in there and I'm going to know everything about it and I'm going to have no difficulty. Far from it, I will have difficulty. There will be complex cases. There will be cases about where, where issues will arise which I have not given a thought of. There's no doubt about that. I was not given the opportunity to even yes. practice as a competition uh, practitioner. Thank you. Thanks, Judge Valley. Uh, the reason one asks this question is because as the JSC, we are seized with that very question of bringing about uh, fairness around affording people opportunities to act. This is hence one is probing this question. And I'm going to ask you one last question, namely, if you were to to make your views known around uh, the criterion to be applied, what would you say we should do in order to ensure that such opportunities are made available on an equitable basis? For a start, I think one of the ways you ensure equity is to also improve transparency. And of course, 
one doesn't know what happens in some of these things, how these decisions are made, when they are made, and who takes them. There needs to be a little bit more transparency about that. There also, if you are an acting or whatever, there needs to be also opportunities. It's no use only appointing people to act, and if they're not then given an opportunity to actually sit in cases. And people must then be given an opportunity to write, because once they've got that opportunity to consider matters and to write, that is where I believe they will develop their skills. So I do believe that the acting appointments are an important uh, a important conduit, important forum within which to which we can build a, a, a repository of people that can be utilized later on. People who can be able to feel their way through the particular areas of law and then decide whether they want to be party to it. So yes, I do believe we should open it up a little bit more and I do believe the work should be spread out a little bit more. It's no different from the way advocates complain. If you don't get a certain area of work, you know nothing about it and you say, it's no use complain saying that I don't have the skill if I was never given the opportunity. Because uh, Commission Kosi Thomas, you know that dispute, dispute, you know that debate, we've been all involved in it ever since we were at the bar and even before that. If you don't give people an opportunity, and you're not going to be able to build their skills. And so I would certainly say there should be firstly more transparency and greater opportunity for people to, to, to engage in that. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, ma'am. But, but you know you can't all have, it, it's not all who desire to have the opportunity who will have it. I would, I would certainly agree with that. But then, then, Chief Justice, with respect, it has to be the person who must be said, you have been given a chance and you said no. It's a different thing when the person has never even been asked. No, no, no. You, you can't been... ask all the judges. There are oh, many. no, I understand yes. that. I understand that. That, yes. that I would certainly agree with. And I would also accept that the people who make the decisions make the decisions bona fide. I would accept that they can't know everybody's skills and knowledge. Yes. They don't have everyone's CVs in their, you know, with them, and they don't know everyone's past, and they don't yes. know everyone's abilities. And so they do rely on judge presidents. They rely on their other colleagues. I accept that too. So of course, the system is far from perfect. The system has got built-in impurities. I mean, that's just obvious. That's about life. Life has built-in impurities. It's little one can do about that, say, but it would work with them. So yes, Chief Justice, and I'm not in any way imputing bad conduct or improper conduct on the part of anybody, judge presidents or anybody else. I have yes. no desire to do that. I have no basis to do that, Chief Justice. Well, just uh, by the way, there's also a suggestion in the interest of transparency that even the way the sifting committee goes about sifting, must be open, must be transparent. So uh, it's getting interesting. Then there may be some some good points there. How do you yes. people sift? Who do you leave out? And so on and so forth. Yes. But you've made your point. Commissioner Thank Schmidt? Thank you, Mr. Chief. Thank you, Chief Justice. One issue. Um, I'm still trying to determine the basis for your interest in competition law because you didn't have a practice in yes. competition law. Uh, you were fortunate enough to act for a period in the competition, yes. uh, where does it arise from? What what would make your... I think Commissioner Schmidt, uh, I would have loved to do more competition work even as a practitioner. It wouldn't come my way. I have no say over that. What is my interest? I have an abiding interest in, pol in economic matters, political econo economic matters. My interest in there started when I went to, to university. I'd already started in accounting and economics and, bus and business economics. I trained in that field of, of law. I know economics reasonably well. Um, I, know, I know things about cost theories. I know all those things fairly well. I would have loved to get that work, but it, was, it appeared esoteric and it, appear it was outside of my reach. Um, the same when I became a judge. I informed um, my judge president, so it, he thought that I could participate. He threw me in cases involving intellectual matters, complicated ones, where these issues arise, debt securitizations, etc. And he asked me to look into those, and he was quite satisfied with it. So yes, my interest comes from my own concern. But I do say this, that while I did take an interest in economics and political economy, if you want to call it that, I have a more abiding interest in sociology. 
I felt closer towards sociology all my life. Then only afterwards did I discover that I could become a lawyer. And when I joined the group in which you were a member, I came to power in 1996, very late in my By then I had done so many other things. Uh, but always, from the beginning, I saw the interplay between sociological issues and political economic issues. And I still believe that they are very, very important. Uh, I could give a longer answer, but I think it'll be unfair. I don't want to. I, I think it is long. Uh, if you don't mind, can you just be brief and just yes. answer the question and allow whoever yes. is putting the question to Thank follow you. up if necessary? I do apologize for that. Thank, uh, you. Thank you. And I do not want to rave a rant. I do apologize. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Just. Thank you. Any other commissioner? Commissioner Helens? <coughs> Judge, I see that you've um, included the case of Nkala and uh, the mines, and the whole judgment is here. I seem to remember that at the time application for leave to appeal was made, the judgment wasn't available. Am I wrong? The judgment, the application for leave to appeal judgment was written. There was a certain a number of issues. It was written on the same day after the arguments were given, or the day after, I can't remember. It was then read out because some of the issues still needed, so there were still some things that had to be clarified. Thereafter, I lost control of it. I know nothing about it thereafter. I don't know when it was issued. I don't know who. All communications was then done with the, by, with the lead judge, judge, Deputy Judge President Mojapello. And so I would not be able to answer any further. I think I heard that, uh, um, that the further proceedings to the SCA had to go ahead without the, without oh, no, the judgment refusing leave to appeal. That wouldn't be correct. Uh, I'm not sure if that's good. Uh, I, I, look, I stand to be corrected, but I do know that a written notes were read and it was read out in court. Deputy Judge President Mujapello was reading from a script that obviously that was not the one signed by the party, by us all. It was written quite uh, hastily. It was written on the spur of the moment. It was a very, very complicated hearing as well. It took an entire day. And as you know, that case involved 40 counsel. It just wouldn't go yeah, away. So, yes, but I don't believe that we had any way as, as a bench, and I speak for the bench and not for myself alone on this, in any way delayed or held back. We were always were conscious about the importance of the matter and about the need for the matter to be expedited. Uh, an entirely different subject, and I'm, I'm not looking for a treatise, just your prima facie thoughts. How the leniency processes in competition law are going to fit with the criminalization of uh, certain uh, anti-competitive conduct. It seems to me that if you seek leniency, you make a full breast of it, and at the same time, it's a confession and it's been criminalized. Have you any thoughts how, how that's going to work in practice? I really don't know, and I wish I knew the answer to that question. All I do, can say this is that criminal law is incredible, the, the proof required in criminal law is, is quite high and so as a result thereof it will be quite difficult once the criminalization process sets in for there to be actual prosecutions that will be very, very successful. It will involve a great deal of time and I can understand why the prosecutors are, deter are keen to try and expedite it or to try and find another way out of it. Uh, but I can't tell how it will work out. I can see the problems I envisage the problems you can see I can, uh, that you point out, and I can see them. Because leniency is, in effect, a full confession. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you don't get leniency. And if yes. that's admissible against you, that's a confession. Well, <laughs> I see my fellow <laughs> just on the competition appeal court disagreeing. But look, that's not a matter that will come up before the competition no. appeal court anyway. So no. unfortunately for me, I won't be having to deal with it. I was just interested in on your thinking <laughs> on it. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Helens. Dr. Mtsaka? Uh, judge, do you want us to understand that uh, there are no opportunities within the judiciary for people who feel overlooked uh, to raise that uh, for consideration uh, and that you have to raise that uh, 
in a forum like this, where, if I'm not wrong, our concern is whether or not uh, candidates are appointable, <coughs> uh, and then take that opportunity for, for lamenting. I think the, the, there is always room for improvement, and I think there might be some place where people can, should, there should be some place where people can go and ask and get answers. Uh, but I don't want to create a position where people must start making complaints against judge presidents because they believe they should have been appointed in an acting post and are not then appointed. We don't know the reasons. Once they're given reasons, that should be it. I don't want to open up a process where tomorrow we start getting review applications because someone wasn't chosen as an acting appointment. I mean, I, I'm a bit concerned about finding the right balance. I think there is room for improvement but I think we need to think carefully because I think we need to find the right balance. We need to consider various consequences that can arise from whatever actions we take. I can't be shorter than that, Chief Justice. Don't you think that uh, that kind of approach may create a situation where previously disadvantaged uh, candidates come here and lament about apartheid and about the past and that they did not have an opportunity and uh, then convert this forum into a grievance mechanism? I do not have sufficient information, knowledge, or background about what happens in these forums, but it's possible that it has happened, but I can understand. I must say this in their favor. I can understand if they are aggrieved, because some people do feel very strong. Their grievance is strong. And there may be, sh there should be some place where they should be able to have a meeting with the respective judge presidents, or whether they should be able to take it up. I don't know with the chief justice's office. I don't know. I just don't know about the resources or enough. But I do accept that people do feel very aggrieved, and some of them have may have legitimate grounds for doing so. But as a person who believes that he should perhaps have been considered earlier, why can't you articulate? some of the factors that you believe must be taken into account in considering people for the possibility of acting. You say there should be there's room for improvement. Can't you then, as a person who uh, was perhaps not given the opportunity as early as you believe, maybe you should have been given the opportunity, suggest one, two, three. I mean, there have been two questions. Okay, Is this not the opportunity for you to outline and say this, that, and the other? Let's get to hear what it is. Okay. I would think that, that people must feel free to be able to approach the judge president concerned without having, uh, or even yeah, the judge president concerned, or even the chief justice, and ask why they've been, and then they can take it further. At the moment, there seems to be no room for that at all. I would think that this in any event will be attended to if, and I'd like to repeat that, if there's more transparency, a person can see beforehand how people were chosen and why they were chosen. And they can also, maybe there should be a room where the judge presidents must be able to say, I have a number of acting appointments in a certain place. I'm considering people, do you want to put your name forward? Maybe that should be a way forward. And then the judge presidents will actually have found, oh, I didn't know you were around, but now I do know. So I accept that judge presidents are also, in a sense, stifled or hamstrung by the way the process works. But I don't want to come here and be an apologist for judge presidents. I don't want to say that they did, they did everything they do is right. I don't think they do. Um, that's my view. But what stops you from writing to your judge president, maybe, to raise this at the heads of court's meeting, to say people are concerned. It looks like you people are not transparent uh, in the manner that you're considering uh, candidates. Let me give you an example. At one mm -hmm. conference, a judge stood up and said, these judges presidents only give uh, acting appointments to people that uh, they have uh, particular relationships with. Mm -hmm. Now to avoid that, in a democratic country, mm. I can't imagine a judge not being able, even if it means through mm. the, the head of court or directly to the chief justice, say, 
looks like you people are too secretive. I want to know now, and these are my suggestions, as part of the body of judges, this is what I think you need to consider as you recommend people for appointment <coughs> as acting judges. Why can't that happen? Why is it not possible? Members it, of the public write to us all the time. I think it's possible, and I think I should, uh, I mean, if I haven't done, I think it's a, it's a good suggestion. Um, I think it's not a bad one, but I hope that from there it doesn't develop into just some sort of legitimate expectation um, and or whatever. But I think those are concerns. I would support that, that people should write it. And maybe I was, I was, I was I sh I, in my own case, if I felt strongly about it, I should have written about it. I don't know if I did feel that. I did a lot of other work, so I just continued in whatever work I'm doing. Uh, but I, I would support, endorse that suggestion. I would certainly think it's a good one. And you've been a judge for four or five years, isn't Yes. It? Yes. Uh, judge President uh, Davis? Can I just clarify something, uh, because you've raised it. If I told you that I think you'd been a judge for about two years and Judge President Malumbo did raise your name with some others mm. and at that stage I had enough judges and then the only other time he's mm. ever raised it with me was in April this year and I immediately appointed you, would you be able to say that was wrong? No, that's exactly what I'm saying. It's a lack so of I information. No, no, the only point it's I transparency. I just wanted to simply say that. that I just really want to place that on record. I really am not imputing bad conduct on anybody's part. I'm merely saying what I know from where I saw it. And yes, if my name was put up two years ago, it does indicate that the judge president of my division, my leader, had discovered me and had found that I had the necessary skills and had told me about it from then. There's nothing more I can say about it. There really isn't. And what is showing out of this in in uh, exchange is that maybe with what I see or hear from the Chief Justice is an ex excellent, dis uh, excellent suggestion. Maybe uh, we should write and we should then get an explanation and then the matter should be left there. And there will be then less then there will be mitigation that, 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 that will, you know, that will in some ways become uh, assist in, 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 in holding people back from being so aggrieved. Commissioner Nokes. Thank you, Chief Justice. <coughs> um, Judge, it would seem to me that you are aggrieved about no, the I'm fact not. that... Can I, yeah. Sorry. Um, so, just if I can finish, Judge. Um, it would seem to me that you are aggrieved by the number of acting things that you have been given to that court. The level of you criticizing the systems and also your insistence on this. Am I right? No, you're not. And I do apologize to any and everybody here who believes that I'm saying I'm aggrieved. I have identified what I thought was a weakness in the system. I have done no more than that, and no less than that. I've been asked, do I think that the system has built in unfairness? I've admitted that it does. I've been asked what possible solutions could I suggest? I've tried one, I've accepted the one the Chief Justice says. I believe transparency is an important one. That is about all I want this thing to be. I don't want to see it going beyond that. I cannot, there is insufficient evidence before me to make any more determinative findings. It just isn't sufficient evidence before me. Thank you, Chief Justice. Any other commissioner with a question? As we part, I agree with you on transparency. There are issues. Others say even the deliberations of the commission. You must tell now how, and maybe even open them up to the public. Anyway, thank Do you, you want Judge. Me to comment on that, Chief no, Justice? That, that, that was a goodbye <laughs> remark. <laughs> Chief Justice, I acted for this body. In I was the, I was the advocate for this body in those matters where those cases came up. I don't believe that kind of transparency is necessary, is, is appropriate. I've put that uh, in, in the affidavits that I had drafted at the time, Chief Justice. I certainly don't believe in transparency for everything. Oh, no. I don't think it's appropriate. You are excused, Judge Valley.
Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity, Chief Justice.